Well I'm getting back to the shutter after a uh, considerable delay. Life just seems to get in the way of things. So I think from memory when I last looked at this I'd re got this all back in place and that mechanism works correctly. So there's a few more things to go on here now. I'll start by putting this trigger piece back in place, the release. And that has a spring that needs to go on first. The spring in this case has got a bit of a twist right on the end there. And that's going to hook under this piece right here. So I'll put it over its post, like that. So it's just sitting there. Here is my shutter release. And I will give that a wipe with molybdenum paste in my case. But you can use anything you like, really, within reason. Don't use vegetable oil. And this has to sit on the top. Now this arm of the spring, which I've got flapping around loose there like that, that has to bear up against this point here underneath the lever. So position your spring so that when the lever sits there that spring is not going to be trapped underneath where it shouldn't be. And just pop it in place. Now this screw goes in here. That's the pivot for it. If I can get that started. That's run down. Oh yeah, you could see it did trigger the, uh, the release too. But of course we've got no tension on there. Because I haven't hooked this spring into place yet. So I'll just rotate this so I can get at what I want to get at. Hopefully you can still see. And this end of the spring, I've got to lift up over this post and tuck under that piece at the bottom. And it wants to ping away. That's better, it's tucked in position. So now, this piece is sprung loaded. So when we cock the shutter, shutter just cocks, press your release, and away it goes. No problems at all. So, that's the secret with that. We've got that piece in place. Now the other pieces that need to go on here, they control the action of the B, the B lever action which is where when you set it to B and when you release the shutter the B lever drops in at the point the blades are fully open and it stays there with the blades fully open until you take your finger off the trigger which lifts the B lever out of contact with the main cam and allows it to continue its action and close the shutter blades. So we've got to get these two pieces in place. There's two little pieces here and a return spring and a shoulder screw. I'll see if I can get these in in the right order. Right, we start with this little piece and the tab on the end of that little piece tucks in here in that cutout. So it sits like that. Then we have the other piece, the next piece. This sits on the top. But this arm must pop behind that little pin there. So 
So it sits there like that. Because when this arm is returned to the rest position, that pin acts on that B lever and pulls it out of contact with the main cam. Then we have the spring for it. Let's see if I can get this in the right place the first time. In fact, I don't need to put that in straight away. I can put this screw in and we can fight the spring into place afterwards, I think. That's probably easier. It's difficult enough getting a screw through two levers and into the boss that it screws into without trapping anything underneath. Now the screw is a fairly uh, tight fit in the centre of these levers so you want to be careful to make sure that the levers are actually riding on the, the shank of the screw and are not trapped underneath the shoulder. That, that feels right to me, that's good. Now I need to get its spring in place. Here's our spring. Now from memory, I'm just going to stretch that out over the top of that screw head. Here I'm using a toothpick and my tweezers to achieve that. The short arm of the spring I've, I've got under that lever there and the long arm which at the moment is against the lens tube I'm going to need to pull that round and hook it under this arm here. It would help if I had a better pair of tweezers. Let's try this pair. Yeah, it's just helpfully tucked under something there where I can't get at it. I might unhook the other end first. That might be my best option here. So I need to get the other end of the spring out where I can get hold of it. Yeah, it's tucked right down underneath. Let's lift that spring off, put it on this way. That's better. I'll get this long arm in position. And as I said, it goes under this tab here. I'll just rotate this so I can see it easier. You probably won't. That's it, that's hooked into place. And the other end of the spring, I can see and I can, therefore I can get to it with my tweezers and hook it into position. I'll try and get this in an orientation where you can see. I haven't got the right glasses on for this unfortunately. Okay, where's that spring is not playing the game. There we go. That spring is not being helpful at all. No, I just can't get it seem to get it hooked into place. 
to have another go. It's not happening. Take that spring off and have another look at it. Right, well I'm quite certain I've got this all in the right place and it's all the right spring. So why will it not go where I want it to go? I can get one end in without any trouble. I'm having trouble getting the other end in. Okay. I've got it out where I can get at it now. Okay, so that's what I wanted to achieve. The long arm hooks under here, and the short arm hooks under that tab there. So now we cock the shutter, we should get the B action to move. And the B action is this lever here. You see how it's against that post, it's preventing this from uh, carrying on its motion. So if I release the shutter release, you'll see. This arm comes down, this pin bears on the B-lever, the B-lever pivots, moves away from there and allows the action to continue. And that would pull the shutter blades to the closed position. So, that part is all good. And there's uh, not much more we can do with this until we're ready to put the case over the top. But there is one thing we can do. In this case, our flash contact can go on first. There's a little barrel shaped standoff. It sits right there. Our flash contact in this case looks like this. And the slot goes over the pin on the arm here. And the screw passes down through that flash contact, through the barrel, and screws into the main plate. And you can see something of the action of the flash contact. When the shutter opens, this pulls away this way. This flash contact here comes across and hits the pin on the flash contact. Let's see if we can cock the shutter and open it on B. Let's get it to do that. On B you can see that that thing had swung all the way across to the outside of the case. See that? See that action there? That's that action there, this flash contact swinging out, which hits the pin of the flash contact on the case that makes everything go. So that's our mechanism plate basically. The main works are together there now. All that needs to be put on the mechanism plate once it's in the case with the blades fitted and all the rest are the, uh, the delay action which fits in here and there's that little spring 
That little springs job is to keep some tension on the blade actuating ring so that when you cock the shutter, this thing doesn't twitch away. You see how it does that? See, as I go to cock the shutter, you can see that this blade, this ring starts to move. Now that would open the shutter blades up just a tiny amount, but it would fog your film. This spring acts on that to stop that from happening, like that. Anyway, those are the two pieces. Can go on the shutter once I've got the blades back in position and we're ready to fit the case. But um, I haven't dealt with the case yet. Now the case, this contains our diaphragm blades. And in this case, they're a little bit stiff. The action's a bit stiff. Now that can be a couple of things. Typically it's oil on the blades, sticking them together and making it difficult to shift the lever across. But it can also be the lever itself. There's two screws coming through from the inside there which connect this up with the ring that opens and closes the blades. If this ring is bent, which is by no means, un means uncommon as people get their big fat fingers under the controls and start pushing them the wrong way, or if there's dried grease or grit or dust underneath that ring, it means that the setting can be quite stiff even though there's no actual problem with the blades themselves. Now, sometimes you can tell what's happening. If you carefully look at the blades while you move the lever, if they distort, if you see them buckling up, that's a sign that the blades are sticky with grease. If there's no sign of that, then most likely any friction you're getting here is down to grease, dried grease or dust in the control lever here itself. But in any event, I want this apart. So let's have a look from the front. We've got two screws hold the retainer plate in place. And the retainer plate has, how many blades have we got in this one? Nine, I think. Ten blades. Ten diaphragm blades. So it's got ten little pivot points there the blades swing on. Let's open this up. Now you can see through the holes here in that plate you can see screw heads. They're the screw heads. I'm going to move them around to their other position, their closed position. They're the screw heads that belong to the other end of these two screws here. So I can remove those. that lever will fall away. Here's our setting lever. Now that doesn't look particularly dirty or greasy. If I tip this upside down, those two screws should come out where we can recover them. Here's one of them. Its mate is where? It's still sitting there. So, I can move that back into the uh, blades open position. There's two screws in this case that hold the retainer plate in place. Now you could mark the position of everything here, but I'm just going to take a run at it because I can tell that the flash contact here is opposite a little cut out in that plate. Let's tip that lot out. Here's their case. Now it's just got the slots in there, the blades don't fit directly into the case. One end of the blades fits into this piece, this is our moving piece, it's coupled to the lever. And the other end of the blades fit into the plate, the cover plate here. Now these are all relatively clean. So why it should have been a little bit stiff, I don't know. It's certainly not a problem with the blades. There is a hint of some dried grease on that plate.
8 and certainly that needs to move and that's connected to the lever so that may have been it, yeah, there's a greasy layer in here where that ring sat in that way up so the grease wasn't directly on the blades it was between this and the case anyway all these parts I'll need to clean up with some naphtha and then have all the joy of reassembling it You can ignore that piece where I told you to put the flash contact in at that point. I've raced ahead about 25 different steps and uh, that's not the right way to do it. I'll strip this back down, we'll go from where we left off. I've cleaned all my diaphragm blades carefully, just using naphtha and cotton buds. I cleaned the plates. and the setting lever and got all the old grease and rubbish off those it, um, you can see from the state of these that grimy look I should put in the shade a bit you might be able to see a lot of grime came off those uh, particularly the setting ring the ring here that does turns and brings the blades in and out and in a case there was a lot of grease in there uh, dark coloured, very dry um, that was causing our problem I would say anyway we have our blades all cleaned, I've cleaned them carefully swabbing them with cotton buds and naphtha now the diaphragm blades because they have pins on them be very very gentle cleaning them because otherwise you will catch the cotton bud on one of those rivets and tear it out or damage the blade either of which is a major nuisance so I want to reassemble the diaphragm and obviously I've got to fit my blades into this centre disc I want to know which way up the disc goes which way am I putting this thing in the camera? So we know it goes in the case and I know that this cutout here goes to the flash contact because I checked. So when I look in the case next to the flash contact I can see two holes side by side. Well they're not here so if I flip this thing over the holes line up. So I know that my blades are going to go on this side of that plate because this plate covers the blades so I'll put that on my assembly jig and my assembly jig is a two half inch drive sockets a 27 mil and a 10 millimeter and something of a similar nature would probably work well for you I've used this for years I've never felt the need to make anything fancier it works very well. Right, putting the blades in place. They've got to go the right way up. And what's the right way up? Well, where you see these blades are chewed off on one corner, that's the end that you want to be fitting into the plate. And there's about 10 blades here, and you just go around stacking one on top of another in an anti-clockwise direction until you come to the last few and then it gets a bit more entertaining I always use a pair of tweezers to lift the blade into place and a toothpick to help me manoeuvre things into position um, other people will have their own methods that they like to use you just want something that's simple straightforward and repeatable and that's served me well using this method I'm sure you could turn yourself up 
if you had a lathe. A fancier looking assembly stand than this. And as I say, I've never, I've never felt the need and I've been using this for years. Now we've got to get the other blades in position. The holes I want to put them on in the plate are hidden by these blades. So I've got to pull these blades back out of the way, gently, so I don't tip anything off. So I can get my last four blades in position. And most times this will go smoothly. Every now and then it won't. Every now and then you will bump it at the critical moment and the blades will fly off. Or you'll go to lift a blade in place and knock one of the original blades and uh, you just have to start again. So the job can require a bit of patience and you might have to exercise your language skills a bit when things don't go right. But it's certainly achievable and if I can do it, well you can do it. Right, so that's the last blade in position. And now the blades that I'd pulled out of place slid to one side. I've got to lift them back over the top of this without knocking anything off. So I've got to make sure I lift that over the edge of that blade. And very gently swing these blades into position. Now they're all just pivoting on the rivets that we put into the plate. So that's all sitting there nicely now. Now I know I've, from the position of my plate, I know from that cut here, that's where my flash contact goes. So I know that the plate, the cover's going on in this position. Here's the lever that sets the thing in plate, that turns the blades. And I have to know what, where to put that. Here's where the screws come through from my setting lever. And if my setting lever is as far anti-clockwise as it can go, the blades will be in the fully open position. So that's round here. So if I take this and line it up, see where I'm going to put it, drop it into position right there over those rivets on the blades all should be well and it just takes some wriggling to get everything to drop into place that looks okay that looks like everything's where it should be so I've got my flash contact here, that cut out in the plate there, I know that that lines up there. So I'll lower the case over the top. Check that I can see through the screw holes, and it appears that I can. Flip the thing over, take my setting piece apart, and I can see that I've got the holes line up and two of these are where the screws go that hold that plate in position so I've got to find the correct two screws decide which of those screws are where I'm, I'm pretty sure it's there I don't think the screw holes lined up properly. That's 
better. Let's get one screw in and get the other screw in. Now these are just plain screws. The screws that come through from the setting lever, they are shoulder screws. Okay, so everything's in place. Now here I can see that my 10 rivets are sitting in position in those holes. So that's correct. Now I've got this in the blade's fully open position. If I move this, the blade should come start closing. And if I bring it round to the end of the position, I can see through here. And that's where our screws will go for the setting lever. And the setting lever, obviously, we're going to be at the closed end, the F32 end in this end case. So if I flip that over, I can probably fit that on the stand. I can. I've got two shoulder screws. They should drop through the holes in this top plate into the holes on the ends of the arms for the piece that turns and pulls the blades around and screw into the setting lever at the back. They can be a bit entertaining to get started. Let's just check that that happened. And you can see that the blades move nicely. I'll tighten those screws up. Now these screws do not over tighten them. The thread at the end of those screws is very small. Probably about 1.5mm something in that range. They're easy to strip out. They're not going into very thick metal at all. Um, it's not uncommon with old shutters to find that those screws are stripped out. And if that's the case, what you end up doing is you run the screw in as tight as it wants to go. You support the head of the screw on a post from underneath and you rivet over the end of the screw at the back so it becomes a rivet instead of a screw. That's commonly what's done to rescue a situation like that unless of course you've got lots of spare parts but generally we do not have lots of spare parts for things that are as old as this. You make do with what you've got. Okay, so there's our diaphragm back in the case. Moves nice and smoothly. It's not over loose. If it was loose, if it's too loose, if it moves too easily, the danger there is that when you're setting the camera up while you're adjusting the focus after you've set your exposure and you're just getting everything lined up that you accidentally knock the diaphragm setting and um, make a mess of your exposure. So you don't want that rattling too loose. It should have some drag, but because I've cleaned all these blades and cleaned all the rest of the mechanism, I know that there's nothing clogging that system up. That drag that I get there, that's fine. That's great. That controls things nicely. Okay, so we've got our case and we've got our mechanism plate. Uh, we can make the two halves together. 